right, 32 milliamps, 30 C batteries, and most of all my stuff has cast operations. Like I really like this stuff. Yeah. But my issue is all my batteries have been pooping. Don't know why. Like I've been we learned how to charge them properly, learned how to drain them down, discharge, whatever, they're still poofing. Yep. I ended up calling Castle Creations to find out, you know, like, what's up? Because I tried uh, calling the battery thing in the or hobby, hobby center, yep. and they said to call the manufacturer. Right off the bat, when I, when I told him what I was set up, he, he stopped me right there and he said that Castle hmm? Creations prefer to run 35C minimum. In, in all their ESCs, no, not for this that. is what there are. So like, oh, well this understands why. So he said anything over 35C, your battery should not poop, as long as you charge them and work them properly. So. For large scale, right? Or well, for 110, like my boat, uh, I run duals, if they poop. Uh, my big low C I have before, they poop big time. They're, they're the ones that blew up like a balloon. And even this one is, is uh, been, or no, the bomber. Sorry, my bomber is pooped up. Yeah. And it's a castle creation. Because there's some of them, like, let's say they're not going to throw like a regular one. Yeah. So to get away with a two cell, which but, but yeah, you kind of get the Okay, let's get into it. This isn't going to take very long, but I want you guys to be able to see. So maybe bring a chair and just pile in here. It won't take long. I'm going to try to explain this in a way that actually will make like super easy sense for everybody. Okay, grab a chair. <laughs> Anybody here like math? No. Anybody other than him like math? Sure. I love it. Math do enough cool. math in school, thank you. That is good math. Okay, this is good math. math. This means our math. Oh, yeah. I'm still in school. No, no. You brought a cheat sheet. Oh, we're, we're doing uh, Ohm's law here. Okay. Batteries are nothing more than a bunch of power that's jammed into a bunch of math formulas. That's all that it is. So you have to make sure you have the right battery for the right application. That's all that it is. Now, this obviously is a giant battery. Okay. This is a two cell. 7,500 milliamp with a 90 C discharge. Okay, this is a giant battery. Like, I mean, it's the same physical size as every other sort of basic hard, hard case, but that's a big battery. Is it two series or two, or two parallel, two series? Irrelevant. It's a 2P, but it doesn't matter at all. Okay. So this is physically the exact same size of battery. This is a three cell, 5,200 milliamp, and it has a 50 C normal rating, 100 C max. Okay, so I'll tell you what that's all about. Same basic size, okay. Two tiny batteries, we love these at our shop. They fit in the trucks and they're great. And everybody looks at these and goes, how can you possibly run your truck on a 1300 milliamp battery? I'm gonna explain that, it's really easy. Okay, so basically to make your car move or your truck move, you have drag, right? It's like you're pushing this and how much energy does this take to push, right? So if your truck rolls really easy or you have an MO3R or whatever, a race car, it requires very little power to move it. There's not much drag. So that gives you something like this right here. This is where you are on the drag scale right here, okay? Uh, we took a amp meter and hooked it up to this battery, an actual like industrial amp meter, put it in line in the battery, ran it on a 17.5 brushless truck that weighs 13 pounds, a crawler, crawled the crap out of it, like loaded it, stood on it and gunned it and everything. And all we could pull out of it was 22 amps. Okay, 22 amps, I'm gonna give you the math. We had 22 amps registered, right? Here's the formula at the bottom. It was a two cell, 7.4 volts. The total on that is, I think if I can find my formula, 162 watts. 163 if you round it up. Yeah. Okay. So we measured, we don't know how many watts it was taking, 
but we measured the amps and we got 22 amps. That's all the truck would draw. That's a brushless, very heavy, big, gigantic crawler in full stall. Tekin FXR, Tekin uh, brushless system. We stepped on it so it was full stall and gunned it. And doesn't matter what we did, all we got out of it was 22 amps. That's all it will take. The voltage input was 7.4, two cell battery, okay? That's 162 watts, that puts us right here. If you take a big fifth scale crawler, like one of those things, and electrify it, the wattage output on one of those, the wattage requirement is actually over here. 3,725 watts is the amount of power you have to have to make that move, that thing. If you electrify it. Yeah, yeah, you know what it takes, right? Okay, boats and helicopters draw the most horsepower required of anything. One horsepower is 600 watts. Right here. One horsepower, pretty much 600 watts. Okay? So, we're over here now. Okay, so the big buggies. Six horsepower. Like six cell boats, you're talking like 2,700 watts. Okay, this is like big boats with six cell requirement. Uh, X Max, you guys all know about Traxxas X Max, eight cell, six cell. We're talking like huge wattage right here. Okay, this is 20 something, 2,000 plus, 1,500 plus for trucks. Why are boats and helicopters? Requiring more power. Does anybody have an idea? Why do they re Why do they require more power than a vehicle? You need uh, more drag, or with the propeller. Okay. There's always loaded. Always loaded. That's the difference. No the difference between boating and trucking is drag. Boats never let up the drag. Copters and planes never let up drag. A car requires motion to get it going and very little to keep it going. So that's why we only ended up with this on our truck. The peak output we could get on it was this. What does the what do you think one of these actually uses for its everyday just driving around trail run? That's not that most of the time. I don't think you can even see that. We're talking like six or eight watts, okay? So you go on a trail run with one of these six or eight watts. I don't care what power system you put in it. Six or eight watts. Okay. So we're going to do a bunch of formulas here, and I'm just going to show you what, what the, what's going on with that. I'll write these out real quick, and then uh, I'll tell some. I'll I'll get a volunteer to come and help me draw something. Okay. So let's say that I have my big battery, my 7500. Okay. I'm going to do a couple of formulas here. So I have my 7500 which is 7.5 amps per hour. That's the output capacity, okay? My 7500 is a 90C battery. That's what it says. That comes out to 675 amps. Does anybody think that's realistic? That's maybe not without, not without a fire. <laughs> so we're actually gonna divide that by two to get an actual more realistic number. I'll explain why that's not so realistic. That's going to give us 330 amps, basically, which on a two cell battery is going to supply 2442 watts. So if I want that big battery to explode, this one, if I want to puff this battery, I can guarantee to puff it by putting a 2442 watt load on it. I guarantee I will stress this thing to its limit. And it says it's a 90C, but I've actually cut the available current on the math in half. Because the 90C is like a semi-stable peak draw hit. If I put this in a boat and I try drawing you know, 150 amps steady on it, What's going to happen in here is the cells will get hot, and I'll explain what that is. I need a volunteer. Who wants to draw some lines? Get a whole bunch of Denbrights. Steve does. Steve does. Yeah, Steve's here for Steve. Yeah. Okay, so connect a bunch of these dots just one at a time. A lipo inside is called, uh, these are lipo short form for lithium polymer, and what it actually is is there's a whole bunch of plates in the battery, 
little thin tin foil plates in the battery. And in between them is actually a lithium polymer gel. It's a suspension of lithium in a gel that's kind of like just dots, okay? As soon as you bring this thing to its maximum wattage output, you start joining dots together permanently. So you're gonna have, let me draw one more line, just put a bunch of dots in between there. So there's a whole bunch of light bulb dots in here. This one is, this battery's good. It's not puffed out, it's in pretty good shape. If you start drawing it to the end of its maximum wattage for any extended amount of time, and I mean like seconds, if you hold it at its maximum draw, you're gonna to start to join some of the gel dots together. It's a bad illustration, but you get the point. When the battery is old, this happens all by itself. And nobody tells you that. A lipo, the, the lipo, lithium polymer substrate in one of these batteries actually ages. It starts to crystallize by itself over time. So if you go to, uh, if you go to buy batteries, buy batteries from a company who sells millions of batteries so you get fresh ones don't ever settle for like the one with all the dust on it in the back shelf because it's already probably half half crystallized inside don't buy it and what what this is happening let's just say that the c rating is related to the amount of dots okay in your head so let's say this battery has is a 90 c let's say it has 90 dots in it if we start joining these together how many dots do i have left 45 45 if it's half worn, less if it's less and less and less, right? So the older the battery is, or the more you work it close to its limit, the worse it'll get, and the worse it gets, the more the battery decays. It's this self-fulfilling cycle. So the other thing that you need to understand about these batteries is, thank you, sir. Thank you, thanks to Steve. Big help for Steve. Yeah. Great job, Steve. Woo, woo. Great dot placement. Thanks, man. Chris, Chris is where we're actually better. Nerd. <laughs> the way that lithium batteries are designed, these are specifically, they come pre-charged at 3.7, so if it's a 2 cell, 3.7 is the nominal voltage, the middle voltage, times 2 is 7.4, so that's where you get the voltage total for these. But when you charge them, you charge them to 4.2 per cell. When you discharge them, you have to stop at 3.3. If you discharge them below 3.3, this happens almost instantaneously. So almost all the time, batteries that actually puff and feel warm have actually been drawing current below this voltage. That's almost 99% of the cases. And when these actually have lipo fires in a car that's driving down the road and you're like, how could that happen? It wasn't even damaged or poked or anything, right? That's what happens. This, this starts to accelerate really fast. This decay accelerates really fast below 3.3 to the point where they can get so hot that they self-ignite. That's the reason you see lipo fires. It's not from bad care or anything like that. The other thing that you can do to make these join together is actually stab it with a screwdriver. And you can short out a lipo by stabbing it together, but all you're actually doing is making less dots and touching the plates together. That's all you're doing. You're shorting out the plates. It's a lot of work. I mean, if you have anybody tried to wreck a lipo battery? Have you ever tried that? I figured Wade, yeah, I figured Wade. Yeah. Anybody else, anybody normal? Um, and, right. and for those that don't think it happens, it happens. Uh, Chris and I, and yeah. uh, Kate, we were on in an event in Pennsylvania. Uh, we came outside and we're like, what does that smell? Like, something smells. And we were literally in the parking lot at the hotel. The closer we got to the car, we realized that there was a haze all over the inside of the windows. Oh no. Uh, uh, and uh, one of his trucks, uh, the battery went inside his car overnight. Overnight by itself. By itself. Yeah, unplugged. Yeah. And uh, we could have lost every vehicle, tiny truck in the car, including the car. We Let me get this straight. And this is the guy that's teaching us the. Well, we, I think <laughs> we, 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 that's what makes us the expert. Why? Okay. Oh, uh, all right. But but you think you're you, you know it, yeah. you think they're invincible leading up to that one event, and and oftentimes that one event is a very big event. Yeah. Uh, plane, so, the whole thing, and we learned our lessons. Yeah. We never saw the fire in there. The car was full of smoke, and it, we couldn't even get in it. It smelled so bad. But the realities are, yeah, it, that's toxic. that was a hard body Jeep that literally melted. Okay, so ABS melting is 270 degrees. So 
the, the literally the ABS hard body literally melted around the battery casing. And when it was done cooking and we took the whole truck apart to see what was in there, the only thing left in there was tin foil plates. There was no plastic, there was no wire, there was nothing except metal plates. Yeah. So, so I, I have a new respect burn. for light bulbs. Yeah. Make sure they're in the boxes, yeah. in the metal containers. Yeah. Like, it's not when, it's not if it's going to happen, it's yeah. when is it going to happen. The uh, pouches are, are they in the book? Like the yeah, so what the lipo pouch actually does is it's, it's designed, it's made out of a material that's incombustible. So it's not going to keep your battery from burning, but it'll keep anything else from yeah, burning. You don't burn your house. The smoke will come out of it, and it'll contain all the heat, all the fire, all the problem. It'll contain it within the bag, and that's how you keep your house from burning down. Yeah, put them in a bag. Yeah. <laughs> not a plastic bag. Okay. So, so before you get yeah, go ahead. too far, is ahead. there any advance warning no. that a battery well, is, yes. is uh, other than, other than yes. puffing? That's just all puffing? Get. Yeah. So is it true that puffing is like it's releasing some gas inside itself to kind of like show that the battery is going bad? Uh, there's multiple theories on that. Uh, no matter, it, it could have something, no, I don't know that I haven't taken them apart to find out, but the lipos are not, are, are not uh, sealed. So if a lipo is holding gas in it, they're not sealed, so that's not the case. Lipos are inherently waterproof. Like, you don't have to waterproof a lipo. You can stick it right in the water and then bring it home and dry it off, and there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't change anything, because they vent. They're made to vent. So one of the theories is that when this stuff is crystallizing in between the cells, it's actually changing shape. So instead of it laying flat, it's actually growing. It's like, a, it's like spray foam. That's the theory. So obviously, I've actually had puffed batteries and I've actually pierced the outer casing, squished them back down, and I'll oh, be going over it. Really? Yeah. Which we don't want to do. Yeah, no. Uh, you, you that's don't uh, that's really that. scary. You don't want to do that. Well, well, what you really might be doing is just like foam is compressed foam, right? You're compressing. Oh, no, you actually so you, can't, you, you can't go from a very right. stable battery like that to yeah, a fire. You have to seal it again very carefully after that. Uh, yeah, you can if you overdraw it. Yeah. What I'm saying is it's sitting there like that. Yeah. You know, whatever charge is it, yeah. it looks like a pretty good shape battery. Yeah. It's yeah. safe mm -hmm. to sit like that. I'll switch yeah. We're not going to. I'm just thinking, like, I leave them on the workbench the other time. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty good usually, but put them on my keys. Yeah. So the battery that was in the Jeep that melted. Uh, didn't show any signs of puffing, uh, but it had been in there for probably four years, and we don't know when it was manufactured. Okay. So let me su let me just suggest the battery was three or four years older than that. I'm just going to guess. Yeah. So let's say that battery was six or seven years old. Yeah. Even though we were hardly drawing any power out of it, it was a scale truck, right? So the battery had a, a 80 amp nominal capacity. I was only using maybe 10 or 15 out of it. So I'm not drawing it enough to do this. But this was probably happening while I'm not looking. Just from age. Just from age, yeah. right? So I expect the plates finally contacted each other in the truck just because of age. That's just because of those. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then, then look out because they really are a really high power thing. We had one blow up in the basement in a mini, in a micro car, remember that? Mm -hmm. It was a little tiny two cell, I think 350 milliamps or something. Yeah. And while it was driving around, it's just like, Whoa! Whoa! It like let out this. I mean, that was all it had, right? The battery was only like the size of two thumbnails, but all it had was a big puff of smoke, and then we were just like, "Whoa! Golly, is that ever like it just cleared the basement? It stinks like burnt electronics, you know?" I think that was a camera car. Yeah. Okay, so I want to show you some interesting math here. This will be the last thing I've got. Um, so let's just say we have this 7590C and it can put out 2400 watts, okay? Now we're going to move to this battery right here. This one is a 5203 cell. This is a nice big battery, by the way. I'm, I, here's a little plug for Helios RT. Anyway, great batteries. Uh, let me write down the numbers on that because this is a really inter interesting thing to see. So this is a 5200 and it's a 50C nominal. That turns out to 260 amps. We're gonna divide that by two just because we wanna be safe LiPo users. That gives us 130 amps. Uh, it's a three cell battery. So if we take the three cell voltage instead of two and put that into the amp math, we end up with a battery that can actually put out 
1,443 watts, okay? So what happens if we have a six cell truck now, like a big Yeti? If we put two of these together and create a six cell, what part of the formula changes? Anybody? Just the nominal voltage. Okay, but if the nominal voltage changes and the amp stays the same, then what happens to the wattage? It increases. So let's say we put two of these in parallel, we get a six cell, now we have 2,800 watts available, right? So that's why we double up these batteries. That big Yeti comes, I need two batteries in it, and the reason I need two is because I gotta get some more wattage somehow. So you, you are joining the batteries in series, right, so to get wattage. Okay, I'll do one more. This one here, my favorite battery of all time. It's a three cell, 1500. This is a tiny battery, 45 to 90 C. That's what it's rated at. And that's a conservative rating. So I'm gonna go 1500 <laughs> times 90 C. That gives me 135 amps. I'm gonna divide that by two, which gives me 67.5 amps. Can you believe this thing is supposed to start a car? Like 67 and a half amps, really? Actually they do, but that's a different story. So it's three cell, and that's gonna give me 749 watts, okay? My last battery is my other favorite battery, which is a tiny little one, 1300. This one is a 45C, pretty small battery, 45C. And that gives me 58 amps. I'm gonna divide that by two, which puts me right down to 29 amps, but it's a three cell giving me a total wattage of 324. Okay, if a scale truck at its maximum with a brushless power system can take 22 amps or 162 watts, this little tiny battery can still give me 324 watts, okay? So this is actually a contender. You don't need this thing in a scale truck, you just don't. Now. Here's something interesting. If this truck needs 162 watts and we take this battery and leave it on the shelf for years and decay it so it's half decayed, okay? We're, we're act, the decay is actually taking out the C rating. So let's cut this battery down in half again. If we cut this in half, guess what we get? 162 watts. This battery at half capacity can still run a scale truck with a brushless power system. So what does the milliamp hour mean? All that it means is the size of the gas tank. There's the, each of these things actually means something completely different. So milliamp hours, 7,500, that's a big gas tank, okay? 1,300, pretty tiny gas tank. We all know this from our cars, right? Cars, ATVs, whatever it is. If you have a 50 gallon tank, goes far, you have a 10 gallon tank, mm -mm. okay? So you see the difference? So if somebody says, oh, you gotta have a 35C battery, 35C to what? That's just one part of the formula. You gotta know the rest of the math if you're gonna come up with a number that might suit the vehicle you're putting it in. We have, uh, Dana and I both fly uh, giant scale aircraft that are electric, six cell. We run six cell, 3,300 batteries which uh, I think are something like 50 C. So 3.3 times 50 is gonna give us 100 and whatever 60 amps available. There's been very few times they come back warm because we're only putting out the power at the beginning for takeoff or whatever, and then once they're moving, they use very little power. If you have a boat, you need a lot of available wattage because the drag never changes on the boat, ever. If you're running this scale and it has a huge peak current, like the peak current can be braking or power, which is why a lot of guys with big, big ESC, big uh, trucks or big ESCs, big batteries, turn the brakes down. If you can, turn the brakes way down because the flash current on braking is actually worse than the pickup current on throttle. Yeah, you can create more damage and more fire and more electron, more electron heat with braking than you can with acceleration. So punch control, same thing. If you have a fast buggy, fast car, turn the punch control down. You'll probably really not notice that much when you're driving, 
but it'll make a huge difference to the battery life because punch control is this right here. How much peak current it'll put out. ESCs that have uh, current limiting on them, the, the race car guys do that, right? You, have, you limit the current on them so that you can get your full speed on the trip straight away without having to limit the throttle and stuff like that. You can set ESC parameters for that. That's this. So motors, you gotta have a motor that can handle the power you're gonna put in. The ESC is the size of the pipe that you're gonna feed out of the gas tank. And you gotta make sure that there's enough stuff in the tank to actually feed that pipe. Otherwise, you're gonna have heat problems. That's it. Puffing batteries, 99% uh, of the time happens because they're actually running below operating voltage. Mm -hmm. That's when most of this decay happens. If you have a voltage cutoff setting on your truck or your ESC, set it to like three and a half. Mm -hmm. Because the hit current is still gonna dump just below that and then you want the batteries to shut off before you get into this danger zone where it starts to really cook stuff. <clears throat> Questions? I know that's a lot of food for thought, but. What's the expected life? <laughs> Thousands of cycles. No, not the cycles, <laughs> the age. Um, I'm gonna suggest that uh, if you have three or four years of semi-regular use on a battery, it's probably time to retire it. Because after four or five years, you're starting to get enough crystallizing in the battery that it's, there's no real... Yes, I've got three well, of those 7500s, yeah. and one of them is just not holding the charge for very long when I put it in the slash. That's the one. And so, so that's the suspect. Right? It's, it's not time to take that one out of rotation. Yeah, it's, it's not puffed. But it's, 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 yeah, it's doing the same thing on my summit. Some of my summits are doing the same thing. I got two batteries, charge them up full blast, and I barely get any runtime out of it. And also, it lipo cuts off as soon as I hit the trigger. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah because when the battery shows that it's lost capacity, you know it's done. It's going to Anybody know how to dispose a battery properly? Lipo? Some water? <laughs> Total battery? Throw it in the swamp. <laughs> Flood waters are up there. Total, total battery will come in. Burn it. Get a tin can or get a tin can, a glass jar, anything like that. Put it, fill it with water. Put a little bit of table salt in it and drop the battery in. Come back in a week, take it out, throw it in the garbage. Nope. Oh, right? It's still being discharged. The salt uh, produces the, some conductivity in the water. That's very controlled. How much salt? A little bit. You don't need much. Probably hard water is probably just about as good. I mean. yeah, I've seen some videos done, and you actually see the bubbles, con uh, the connectors. Yeah, the, you plug, see the, the bubbles. plug will bubble sometimes. Really kind of cool. Show your kids. Look, you're just shorting it. That's it. Yeah. You're, you're, you're slow shorting it, but you're also shorting it in a cooler. Yeah. Right. So there's no chance of this ever heating up, mm -hmm. and the current in the water will be consistent for the entire life of the di of the heat discharge. And once it's discharged, there's no risk of fire in the dumps. So nothing garbage. It's all recyclable material. Even if you poke it with a screwdriver, it won't blow up? If it's dead, it's zero, well, it's, it's dead. If it's dead, there's nothing left to react? No. Nope. Yeah, poking it is a reaction between the plates and the substrate. If the plates are dead, if the voltage is dead, yeah. Is a quick, uh, quick question about the storage and um, uh, batteries going bad with, with storage. So uh, some chargers, they have a... Uh, yeah. Some chargers have a storage mode? Yeah. And so, it, like, you drop your voltage, but yep. not, not too low. Uh, you store it. It's winter, whatever. Um, yep. You could come back, and one of the cells just decided to drop below the other cells, and then your pack is. is yeah, that's when you pull that cell. Your your three cell pack becomes a two cell. Yeah. So that's that's kind of like a just a freak accident. That's like one cell. It's usually this. One cell decides to yeah. go back. If you have a. If you have a bad cell in a battery, it's usually because it's overdrawn or it's crystallized. That's it. But technically, it's supposed to be able to store a battery and not really have any trouble with it. No. no. If, the, if the polymer is good, you run them at this, you store them at 3.7, which is the nominal voltage for the cell. So there's no charge action, there's no discharge action. If it's sitting at its nominal manufactured voltage, it will last for years and years and years, and you'll have very little decay. Now, is that the same for three cell or two cells? It doesn't matter, because it's per cell. 
Okay. It doesn't matter if it's an eight cell, it's per cell. Okay, it's 3.7 per cell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys. Good.